Hello, this is day three, and this is Sarah, also known as Sarah Hyphen Louise Young. Now, the hyphen's important, it's isn't super it? important because I was a, an adult entertainer with the adult same... Adult entertainer. <laughs> she was amazing. She retired at the age of 27 to become a 20 lawyer. 20 to 7. 20... <laughs> I'd like to point out that I have not had any alcohol. She's not drinking this month. I'm having deep coffee. <laughs> been drinking since gone four. No, it's actually only it's actually only twenty-five past two and suddenly it's really busy in this cafe that we've decided to film in. This intimate quiet. Yeah, we thought we'll have this. Yeah. 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 So Sarah has been my friend for Ever? Mm. Since we were thirteen and fourteen, which is are we allowed to say how old we are? We were the same age. Ago. We're the same age. We we're both thirteen. I thought you were a year older than me. No, we're the same age, but you're a year below me in school because of when your birthday is. That's the that's Does the that mean I should be that's more the perversity. Should I be more intelligent for my age? I think I'm supposed to be more intelligent, but I'm not. You went to a much better school than I did. Well, you couldn't have gone to a girl's school. Oh, it was a girl's school. I would have loved to have gone to your school. Um, we've known each other 30... 30 years. 33. 33 years. I can't be. Or 34. 31. No, 31? 31. 31 years. We've known each other 31 years. And uh, we've done many cabaret performances together and apart. Oh, we started doing them years ago. I would say Paulus is responsible for me being a cabaret performer because I didn't know what cabaret was. And we sat in his bedroom when he was about 13. And he uh, got a record player, for those of you that remember those, put the stylus on, and we heard the crackle, and he played me uh, Victoria Wood. And I remember the joke about the freshly squeezed tights. And then you played me Fascinating Aida. And you were the first person I spoke to when I got asked to join. And I thought it had been a dream. I thought I'd just got drunk and dreamt about it, and then it was actually real. And I came to your front door and I said, Oh, I had a funny dream last night. I got a message from Fascinating Aida, and it was real. <laughs> So for those so of you that you don't know, Sarah Louise was a member of Fascinating Aida. But you know, which of us has not been the soprano of <laughs> Fascinating Aida, quite frankly. I'm their emergency break glass soprano. <laughs> I had a lovely, I had a year with them, which was fantastic. So we've been fans, we were fans for a long time before. Yeah, we huge fans and of Victoria Wood. And that's why, um, because Sarah has done the Edinburgh Festival and there's so many, <laughs> there's so many times. So many times. They, they, My they, 17th year. They've said to her, if she's, if she's going back, she has to bring someone new, otherwise she can't come in. The cult of the Edinburgh Fringe. No, cult, I, is that really what you do? Yeah. <laughs> oh, right, but I've, sorry. We've worked together on lots of things. We've worked together on yeah. play readings and cabarets and theatre. We've done a pantomime, and... adult panto on the Battersea Barge. Many of those. You were the only sober person in the whole cast, in the whole room, mm -hmm. stage. Cast. That's true. Yeah. And we You're like dragging us to the finish line of the script as we just ad-libbed our way through another bottle of wine. Before the box was the box, it was the Soho Review Bar. Oh, yeah, we watched there. And we ran a night there. Called Too Too, too, too much. much. It was called Too Too Much. Too Too Much. There was not Too Too Much money to go around to pay the performance. And one reviewer <laughs> said that, um, uh, was said, oh, and then the posh bird came on and sang a song in a, in a posh frog. Oh, really? About you. I was like, I was supposed to be the posh bird. That's not nice. Yeah. So we've, we've been the acceptable face of cabaret. The bread and butter pudding, I believe I was described as once. Of cabaret. <laughs> That's so awful. Yeah. I think it was so whilst, whilst other people are, you know, yeah. slathering themselves with Dulux and, you know, shouting about politicians, we're just sort of, sort of in the corner going, and here's a song about Jake Loss we think you'll enjoy. So I'm the perfect person to direct Paula's show. Yeah, <laughs> um, yeah. That's why she's here. That's yeah, the point of this it. rambling nonsense. Yes, yeah. and to share the hard-worn experience <laughs> and scars from several because it's a monster Well, you say several. How many have you done? I think this will be my 17th year of going. <laughs> but two of those have been as a director, and one of them is doing guest slots. So they haven't all been complete. But really? I have done four shows a day on several occasions. Last year I just did one, which was a joy. It was lovely to do one show. Can you think back to... Was Drag King your first show? No, first I Edinburgh. did two before that as a student. Can Dragon you, was my first solo show. Right, so let's think, think back then for me. So when are we talking? How long ago are we talking? 96. 96. Um, and is there anything that you can think of for me and anyone that's listening to, uh, just off the top of your head, do, about tips for survival or the festival or what you wish you'd known before you did <laughs> Drag King? Thing. I mean, we've not got all day, but... No, I mean, obviously the most, the most important thing to do with Edinburgh is to really know why you're going and mm. be clear about what you want to get to out of it. To lose £10,000? Absolutely, yes. If only around one's waistline. <laughs>
um, no, but I think sometimes people have, you know, there's this sort of cliche of it's a place to go and get discovered. And of course, wonderful things happen and you can get reviews and it's lovely to be part of a festival where you know that there is an audience out there wanting to see your work. Yeah. But also the average audience size is four. So is it really? It is, but there are a lot of venues. That's not so an exaggeration. No, no, it's true. It's true, but the free fringe has changed that a lot, which is fantastic. But know why you want to go. And for me, and I've been talking about this before, the last show that I made, which was a show called um, An Evening Without Kate Bush, and my primary objective was to have a lovely experience in the room for now. So if, you're, if you want to go and connect with an audience and have a wonderful time, that, to me, is the thing you keep holding on to. Because it's got to be a show that even if you're having a bit of a rough day and your feet are soggy, you're looking forward to performing. Yeah. Um, I don't drink for the month. This is making me sound like a saint. I do drink a lot the rest of the year. She doesn't. Um, <laughs> yeah. um, basically, this health. experience is just showing me how many chins I have and how she's just run around a field with a man from the army, by the way. Was it a I woman? I did have a watch. A woman from the army? No, a man from the army. man from the army. Yeah. Is it sometimes dog. a woman? It is sometimes. Okay. Yeah, he okay. brought his dog. And do you prefer to be <laughs> shouted at by a man or a woman when you're in a field? <laughs> I don't want any, I don't need to be shouted at. You have no preference? No, I don't mind. Yeah. I'm just, I'm running lines normally as I'm running Oh, you around. really? Yeah, yeah, is that that's what how you I learn do? my lines. I've got to find something, because... Oh, in all seriousness, I've got to find something for next year about my health or my just well-being, my fitness, that, well, probably more than one thing, that changes. And I want to. It's not that I've got to. You do yoga. You're wonderful. I do do yoga. And yoga is wonderful. And it, it has helped me a tremendous amount. But it's not cardio in any way, you know. And because I've shaved my beard off for my panto uh, press launch the other day, this is I'm very... Why don't you come around the mud? There are three BMFs in Edinburgh. Because I hate the idea of running around a field. I'll shout at you. (laughs) (laughs) Do you pay to get shouted at? How much do you pay these people? 50-something quid a month. Uh, I'll be happily shout at you. That can be be called directing. So officially director, but really, I'm just... So there is a Victoria Woods sketch, isn't there? Where um, this little girl wants to swim the channel, and she's Aww. in a she's in she's wearing bright red like you are. Heartbreaking. I think her name's Chrissy, and uh, her, her, I don't know why she wants to swim the channel because she doesn't look like she enjoys it. And her instructor is just shouting at her and barking at her and making her get in the sea. So that could be you and me. You know, there's, some, uh, there's somebody that lives around the corner from where I live now at the road in Crystal Palace and they've got an Annie poster in the window and when I'm walking from the bus stop to my house I can see the Annie poster lit up in the upstairs front bedroom window and then if you look up here a little bit closer there's another musical theatre one and there's a teddy bear and it reminds me of the end scene of that sketch um, by Victoria Wood at this lonely girl with her Annie poster and I was like I was dreaming about you know what the kid what, you know what the kid in that bedroom in Crystal Palace right now was like and whether she knew about the sketch and then when I was going past yesterday there's of course this huge hulking great male brute with a vest on it's some gay guy's spare bedroom full of musical theatre posters eyes. Piercing eyes <laughs> this is what happens and once you start to make the show and Edinburgh seems to be like a nine ten month process everything around you starts to resonate with the show and you start to this is a haggis obsessed. I'm wearing plaid already look that's Lovely. What is that? I don't know. That used gonna... to be a Perrier Award and it was turned into something else. So anyway, um, the point of this ridiculous rambling conversation is to introduce you to the very brilliant uh, Sarah Louise Young, not just as my director, but as my friend. Thank you for directing me. I can't wait. It's going to be good. And it's going to be hard. It's going to be hard. It's going to be hard. Yeah. Not to the directing of you, but to find out, you know, which songs to pick and how to make the show into an hour because there's just so much amazing material out there. It doesn't cool. seem like it should be hard creating an hour of love and inclusivity and, uh, and something which honours somebody. That sounds like something... We'll just, we'll just do that here right now. But actually there... There's a lot of work to put in to make that happen. Well, I think it's balancing the show you want to make with the show you feel the fans want to see and picking the songs, and, and but also putting in a few surprises. It's about shaping the arc of an hour, isn't it? And sometimes you can sit in something and think, gosh, is this hour still running? <laughs> it's <laughs> still going on. Yeah, but also the show will teach you things. But the show we did about Julie Andrews as we started to preview it, we learned so much from the audience response that it shaped the show as it moved along. And really good improvising, things will change. Yeah, yeah, I can, I, I, I can make sure there is no fourth wall like there is now between us. I suppose before we go, what I might say is, well, what do you think about this idea? Uh, 
do we would we like people to say below in our comments um, what they'd like to see in our show or songs to include in our show or anything that they want to say about we're doing a show about Victoria Wood and it's an hour and we want it to be full of love and reminiscences and that's that's all we're trying to achieve so if people have got input we'd love to know the songs that you love yeah and i guess it's it's very much about how her songs have touched us as people so it's not a sort of potted history wikipedia story no it's not the life story of victoria wood because i think you can, you can get that online you can get it on wikipedia yeah. so yeah. yeah yeah it's about the experience that we have as as followers and fans i suppose yeah Thank you for joining me. Oh, it's my pleasure. You're going to probably see a lot more of me. This is a well, flat white, by the way. It's what will. all the kids are doing. Flat white, what the young people are thinking. And uh, I'm going to sign off as I usually do with an unprofessional finger bow. <laughs>